All right, so many of you have been asking about this, and for good reason. So let's deep dive into gut health. It's one of those things everybody's talking about these days but might not really get. Today we're looking at a fascinating podcast episode as our main source, and let me tell you, it is jam-packed with insights. You know, I always thought gut health, well, it's important, sure, but it's mostly about, you know, digestion. Well, get this. Did you know a whopping 70% of your immune system is actually located in your gut? It's amazing, isn't it? And that's only one of the reasons why gut health is so crucial for our well-being. It goes way beyond just digestion. You see, we have trillions of microorganisms living in our gut. Our source material calls them microbes. They form a complex ecosystem. It's a whole community in there working tirelessly to keep us healthy. Wow, a whole world inside of us. I mean, I knew about gut bacteria and all that, but I never really thought of it as an actual ecosystem. And these microbes, they're not just hanging out, right? They're actively involved in keeping us healthy. Absolutely. They're like a team of tiny helpers, constantly working to break down food, absorb nutrients, and even fend off those harmful invaders. They're essential for, well, pretty much everything running smoothly in our bodies. Okay, so that makes sense. But when we say gut health, what does that actually mean? I hear the term all the time. But it feels kind of vague, you know? It really comes down to balance. A balanced and diverse community of these microbes is what we're talking about when we say good gut health. You can think of it like, let's say, a rainforest. A diverse rainforest is a healthy one, right? It's resilient, adaptable, and able to withstand challenges. And it's the same with our gut. So a healthy gut is a diverse gut. I like that analogy. But you know what else I keep hearing about? The connection between our gut and our brain. Is it true there's a direct line of communication between the two? You bet there is. Our source material talks about the vagus nerve, and this nerve acts as a direct pathway. It's like a super highway carrying signals back and forth between our gut and brain. And here's what's even more fascinating. The types of bacteria in our gut can actually influence neurotransmitter production in the brain. Wait a minute. Hold on. So you're telling me the bacteria in my gut can mess with my mood. That is wild. It really is. For example, you have some bacteria that produce GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter known for its calming effects. It plays a role in reducing anxiety. So the balance of bacteria in your gut, it can really affect how you feel, how you handle stress, even how clearly you think. I am blown away right now. So my gut bacteria can literally affect my mental state. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. But let's get real for a second. What happens when things go wrong? What are some signs that uh, maybe my gut isn't as healthy as it should be? I'm guessing it's more than just, you know, tummy troubles. You're right. It can show up in some pretty surprising ways. Of course, there are the obvious signs like bloating, gas, constipation, or diarrhea. But poor gut health can also manifest as fatigue, you know, feeling tired all the time. And skin problems like eczema or acne, even frequent colds or a weakened immune system in general. So if I'm constantly getting sick or can't shake this brain fog, my gut could be sending out an SOS. Absolutely. It's definitely a possibility. Your gut is connected to so many systems in your body. It's amazing. So when it's out of whack, the effects can be felt far and wide. This is starting to make me a little nervous, honestly. Mm. I mean, our modern lifestyle, you know, it's pretty hectic. Processed foods everywhere you look, stress, not enough sleep. Mm. Is all of that wreaking havoc of our gut bacteria? You know, it's a valid concern. Our source material actually talks about that quite a bit. A diet full of sugar and processed foods, chronic stress, even the use of antibiotics, all these things can disrupt the delicate balance of our gut microbiome. They can deplete beneficial bacteria and allow harmful ones to take over. Exactly. And that can lead to what I call dysbiosis. Dysbiosis sounds kind of ominous, doesn't it? Like a sci-fi villain. But seriously, if our gut is this important, shouldn't we know more about what's going on in there? That's a really great question, and it's something researchers are actively exploring right now. I mean, traditional stool tests, they mainly looked for pathogens, right? But there are these newer gut microbiome tests. They can analyze the specific types and ratios of bacteria in your gut. It's like getting a detailed map of your own internal ecosystem. Whoa, that's incredible. Imagine having a personalized guide to your gut health. That's mind-blowing. But we'll have to get into that more in part two. For now, let's talk about what we can actually DO to improve our gut health. Is it all about diet or are there other things we should be thinking about? Welcome back to our deep dive into gut health. It's a really fascinating topic, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we just scratched the surface in part one and I'm already amazed. Remember how we were talking about those personalized gut tests? Like, is that really a thing? 
Yeah, you know, they are becoming more and more common. They can provide a really cool glimpse into your unique gut microbiome. They go beyond just identifying the types of bacteria. They actually analyze the ratios and diversity of those bacteria. So you get this personalized snapshot of your inner ecosystem. Like a census for your gut. That's a great way to put it. Mm. But why is that so important? What can we actually do with that information? Well, that's where it gets really exciting. Knowing the specific makeup of your gut microbiome can help you tailor your diet and lifestyle to support the growth of beneficial bacteria. It's like having a personalized roadmap to better gut health. That makes a lot of sense. So it's not just about like eating more yogurt or whatever. It's about understanding which specific bacteria you need to support. Okay, I'm really intrigued now. But let's go back to that gut-brain connection for a minute. Yeah. You were saying that gut bacteria can actually influence neurotransmitter production in the brain, right? Can you give us like a specific example of how that works? Oh, absolutely. Let's take lactobacillus, for example. It's a type of bacteria often found in fermented foods, you know, like yogurt. Studies have shown that certain strains of lactobacillus can increase the production of GABA. And GABA, as you might recall, is a neurotransmitter that helps regulate anxiety. It promotes relaxation. So having a healthy population of lactobacillus in your gut could actually help you feel calmer and less stressed. Okay, seriously, this is blowing my mind. So by eating yogurt, I could be boosting my mood. I mean, is it really that simple? Well, it's not quite that simple, but there's definitely a strong link between gut health and mental well-being. And that's amazing to me. But what about immunity? We keep hearing that 70% of our immune system is in the gut. Mm -hmm. But how does that actually work? Well, think of your gut as a fortress, okay? It's like the front line of defense against all those harmful invaders and all those trillions of microbes living there. They act like a protective barrier, preventing pathogens from getting into your bloodstream and causing illness. They're like tiny little warriors guarding the gate. That's a great visual, but what are they actually doing to keep those invaders at bay. It's a pretty sophisticated defense system, actually. First of all, the sheer number of beneficial bacteria in a healthy gut creates competition. It makes it hard for those harmful bacteria to gain a foothold. Second, these good bacteria, they release substances that can directly inhibit the growth of pathogens. Oh, so they're fighting back. Yeah. And third, they actually help train your immune system. They help it distinguish between friend and foe, you know, uh -huh. so your immune response is more targeted and effective. So they're not just fighting off the bad guys. They're teaching our immune system how to fight, too. That's incredible. But we talked about dysbiosis earlier, right? That imbalance in the gut microbiome. What causes that to happen? Well, unfortunately, there's no single answer. It's often a combination of factors, many of which are related to our modern lifestyle. A diet high in processed foods, sugar, and unhealthy fats can really deplete those beneficial bacteria. And chronic stress, you know, it can disrupt that delicate ecosystem in our gut. So basically, our modern world is throwing our gut bacteria out of whack. In a way, yeah, you could say that. But okay, enough doom and gloom. Let's focus on the positive. What can we actually do to support a healthy gut microbiome? Well, the good news is we have more control over our gut health than we might think. And it all starts with what we eat. A gut-friendly diet can make a huge difference. Uh, okay, so we're talking about food. But what exactly does a gut-friendly diet look like? The key here is fiber. Fiber. I know it's important for digestion, but how does it help our gut bacteria? Well, fiber acts as food for the beneficial bacteria in your gut. It promotes their growth and activity. So it's like giving them a feast. Exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting. When those bacteria ferment fiber, they produce these things called short-chain fatty acids. And these fatty acids have a whole range of health benefits. Short-chain fatty acids. Okay, now we're getting into the science. Mm -hmm. What do these short-chain fatty acids actually do? Well, one of the most important ones is called butyrate. And butyrate acts like fuel for the cells lining your colon. So it promotes a healthy gut barrier and reduces inflammation. So it's good for our gut lining. Yes. And it's been shown to improve insulin sensitivity, protect against colon cancer, and even impact brain function. Wow, so eating more fiber is not just about you know, keeping things moving. It's about producing these amazing short chain fatty acids that benefit our whole body. I'm starting to see why fiber is such a big deal. So what are some good sources of fiber? You know, things we can easily add to our diet. Well, you want to focus on fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Think berries, leafy greens, broccoli, lentils, quinoa, oats. And remember, variety is key. So it's like a buffet for our gut bacteria. Exactly. The more options we give them, the happier and healthier they'll be. Okay, that makes sense. But what about fermented foods? We mentioned them briefly in part one, 
but why are they so beneficial for gut health? Fermented foods are special because they actually contain live beneficial bacteria. They're also known as probiotics. And these probiotics can help replenish and diversify the bacterial population in your gut. So it's like giving your gut a direct dose of those good bacteria. Yeah, you could say that. What are some examples of fermented foods we can try? Yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, kombucha. These are all great options. And again, variety is important, right? Right. Different fermented foods contain different strains of bacteria, so it's good to mix things up. Okay, this is all starting to make a lot of sense, but I have to ask, what about probiotic supplements? Are they a good option if, you know, someone doesn't like fermented foods? Well, probiotic supplements can be helpful, but it's important to choose wisely. Look for high quality brands that contain diverse strains of bacteria, and ideally they should be clinically tested. So it's not just about popping any old probiotic pill. No, there's a science to it. Okay, noted. But let's talk about some other lifestyle factors that can impact gut health. We mentioned stress earlier. How does stress actually affect those gut bacteria? Well, when you're stressed, your body releases hormones, you know, like cortisol. And these hormones can disrupt the balance of bacteria in your gut. Chronic stress can lead to inflammation. It can reduce the diversity of those beneficial bacteria. It can even increase the permeability of your gut lining which means harmful substances can leak into your bloodstream. Wait, so stress can actually make our gut leaky? That's scary. It's definitely something to be aware of. That's why managing stress is so crucial for both your mental and physical health, including the health of your gut. Okay, deep breaths, everyone. But seriously, how can we manage stress in our, you know, crazy busy lives? Well, there are lots of different strategies. Exercise is a great one. It releases endorphins, boosts your mood, and reduces anxiety. Yoga and meditation can help calm the mind and promote relaxation. Spending time in nature has also been shown to lower stress levels. So it's about finding what works for you. And of course, getting enough sleep is crucial. Absolutely, sleep is essential for overall health. So it's not just about what we eat, it's about how we live our lives. A healthy gut is a reflection of a healthy lifestyle. I couldn't agree more. This is all making so much sense now. But before we wrap up this part, I have a question about antibiotics. You know, we know they can wipe out both good and bad bacteria, but is there anything we can do to minimize the damage? Like, how can we replenish those beneficial bacteria after taking a course of antibiotics? That's a really important question. First and foremost, it's crucial to use antibiotics responsibly only when they're truly needed. You know, overuse of antibiotics is a big problem. It contributes to antibiotic resistance, which is a serious global health threat. So antibiotics only when absolutely necessary. Right, but when they are necessary, there are definitely things you can do to support your gut health. Okay, tell me more. Well, probiotic supplements can be helpful in replenishing those beneficial bacteria. Again, choose a high-quality supplement with diverse strains. And eating fermented foods can help too. So yogurt, sauerkraut, all that good stuff. Exactly. And there's also growing interest in something called prebiotics. Prebiotics. I've heard of probiotics, but what are prebiotics? Think of prebiotics as fertilizer for your gut bacteria. They're types of fiber that our bodies can't digest, but our gut microbes love them. They help them flourish. So probiotics add the good bacteria and prebiotics help them thrive. Exactly. It's a team effort. Okay, I'm starting to get the picture. What are some good sources of prebiotics? You'll find them in a lot of plant-based foods. Onions, garlic, bananas, asparagus, whole grains. So it's about eating a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Exactly. It's all about embracing a diverse hmm. diet. This is all so fascinating. We've learned so much already, but there's still more to explore. Stay tuned for the final part of our deep dive. We'll be talking about practical tips for optimizing your gut health, and we'll answer all your burning questions. All right, welcome back, everyone. We've gone deep into the science of gut health, but now it's time to get practical. If you're ready to take charge of your gut, well, this is the part you've been waiting for. Exactly. We've laid the groundwork. Now let's put that knowledge into action. So let's say uh, someone's listening to this and thinking, okay, I get it. My gut needs help. Where do I even start? Well, we've talked a lot about diet and for good reason. It's the foundation, really, of a healthy gut. But it's not about crazy restrictive diets or anything like that. It's about making the simple changes you can actually stick with. Okay, that's good to hear. I was a little worried you were going to tell me to give up all the good stuff. <laughs> so what does a gut-friendly diet look like in a nutshell? It's all about whole, unprocessed foods. 
foods that nourish those beneficial gut bacteria. Lots of fiber-rich fruits, veggies, whole grains. Right, those prebiotics that feed the good guys. Mm. So load up on the colorful produce, swap out white bread for whole grain, snack on nuts and seeds instead of chips. Mm. Got it. But what about when those cravings hit? You know, any tips for navigating those moments of weakness? Well, you got to be kind to yourself. We're all human. We all have cravings. The occasional treat isn't going to derail your gut health journey. It's all about moderation. So it's okay to indulge every now and then. Absolutely. Just yeah. be mindful of your choices. You know, if you're craving chocolate, maybe opt for a small piece of dark chocolate instead of like a whole bag of M&Ms. Okay. Yeah. That's a good trade-off. But what about those of us who aren't like master chefs? Mm. Any tips for making gut healthy eating more, I don't know, approachable? One thing I always recommend is focusing on simple swaps. Instead of sugary yogurt, try plain Greek yogurt with some honey and berries. Or instead of white rice, go for quinoa or brown rice. Well, I like that. Simple swaps. Easy to remember, easy to do. Mm. But what about fermented foods? We talked about how good they are, but I know some people are a little hesitant to try them. Yeah, I get that. My advice is to start small, find something you enjoy. Not everyone loves sauerkraut right away, you know? Yogurt is a great entry point. Oh, yeah. Yogurt is a classic. And kefir is another good option. I love kefir. It's like a tangy smoothie. Yeah. But for those who aren't quite ready for the full-on fermented food experience, are there other ways to get those probiotics? Probiotic supplements are an option. Just make sure you choose a high-quality brand, one with diverse strains of bacteria that have been clinically tested. So it's not just any old probiotic off the shelf. Right. Do your research. Okay. Got it. But what about prebiotics? We learned that they're like fertilizer for those good bacteria. Mm -hmm. But how do we actually get more prebiotics in our diet? The good news is prebiotics are found naturally in tons of plant-based foods. Onions, garlic, bananas, asparagus, oats, flax seeds. So it's really about having a diverse diet. Yeah, lots of plants. Exactly. Okay, we've covered diet pretty thoroughly. But we can't forget about lifestyle, right? We talked about stress and its impact on gut health. Any stress management tips beyond the usual, like yoga and meditation? It's really about finding what works for you. Some people find relief through creative outlets, like painting, writing, music. Oh, that's a good one. Creative expression. Others find it helpful to connect with others, spend time with loved ones. Social connection, that's so important. It really is. And when you prioritize your mental and emotional well-being, your gut will thank you for it. It's all connected, isn't it? Mind, body, gut. Absolutely. Okay, one more thing. What about those times when antibiotics are unavoidable? Is there anything we can do to minimize the damage to our gut bacteria? One strategy is to take a probiotic supplement during and after your antibiotic treatment. It can help replenish those good bacteria. Like sending in reinforcements. Exactly. And what about prebiotics? Do they help with post-antibiotic recovery? Absolutely. Remember, prebiotics are food for those beneficial bacteria. Right. So we're creating a welcoming environment for them to come back and flourish. Exactly. This is all so empowering. We really can take control of our gut health. You absolutely can. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners as they embark on their gut health journey? Remember, it's a journey, not a destination. It's about making gradual, sustainable changes that you can stick with. Listen to your body, experiment, find what works for you, and be patient. That's such great advice. It's not about being perfect, it's about progress, and the rewards are worth it. A healthy gut can truly transform your life. I couldn't agree more. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into gut health. We've learned so much, and we hope you have too. Thanks for joining us on this adventure, And remember, keep exploring, keep learning, and most importantly, keep listening to your gut.